Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a variation on a video I've done many times, I love doing, which is I can't stop reading until I find a five star. I did it once in like the general version and then I've done it, I think only maybe once other time with last year's wrapped up where I could not stop reading until I unwrapped a five star and read a five star. Today we're gonna to be doing it series edition. I am so excited! So we are going to be reading books where I make progress in series that I'm currently reading and we cannot stop reading until I read a five star. I have gone through my series spreadsheet. I'll put a little video of it here. This is all the series I'm currently reading and I have put together an initial three books that we're going to start with. I've, I've determined the first three books we're reading. I mean one of these may be five star. If not we go back to the drawing board but I think all of these books are strong contenders to be five stars, but also all have reasons that they may not be. So they're kind of all iffy. None of them are like a dead set five star. And they're all series I'm really excited to make progress in. These are some of the series I wanted to read most. So book number one. The issue with this video is you don't really want it to be a one book vlog because then it's very short. So you don't really want to read a five star first, but you also don't want to knock a gift horse in the mouth. And if you get a five star first, I mean, it's great because otherwise you could end up reading 20 books and not finding a five star. So I've kind of gone with a book that I don't think is going to be a five star. I don't, like if you'd asked me is this a five star prediction I would have said no, but I do think it still has a chance, right? I've tried to hedge the bets <laughs> and land somewhere in the middle. If you're going to play a game, girl, play it right. <laughs> So the first book we're going to be reading is Finley Donovan Knocks Some Dead by Elle Cosimalo. This is the second in the Finley Donovan series. Finley Donovan was five star for me last year. It was in my top 10 books of the year. However, I have heard not as many good things about like the rest of the series, <laughs> basically. I've heard it goes downhill a bit. Like I said, I would not predict this to be a five star, but it's not without a chance, right? We're following Finley Donovan who kind of, in the first book, someone thinks she's an assassin <laughs> and asks her to kill her husband. And she kind of gets wrapped up in this crazy world of assassins and it's bonkers. It's so much fun, but I have not heard of the greatest things about the rest of the series. So don't think it's gonna be a five star. Think we will be reading more than one book, but I'm still keeping the opportunity alive. Like I could have read, I don't know, like Escaping from Houdini by Karen Escalco. I did think about that, which is the third in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, which is now the oldest series on my TBR. That is not gonna be a five star, but I feel like avoiding five stars gives you cursed energy for the rest of the video. So we're going with something that's a possibility. Then the next two books are when we really start trying to get a five star, but again, they both have reasons they may not be. So second, I'm going with Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Bowdry. Yeah. <laughs> So here's the thing, Legends and Lattes, second favourite book of last year, five star, absolutely like five star plus, absolutely loved it. I am nervous for Bookshops and Bone Dust because I am scared it will not compare. However, I do think it has a good chance of being a five star, right? I think it has a good shot. I heard a lot of people enjoy it. This one is a prequel, so I'll be able to tell you all about the plot because it won't be any spoilers for Legends and Lattes, but we're following Viv and I think she's in this bookshop and there's other magical creatures and I'm really excited. Travis Bowdry's writing, I'm very excited to return. This is, again, it's iffy, right? Right? It could be a five star, but also I could be like, this just isn't Legend and Lattes, it can't compare. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna go. I'm feeling very nervous. I don't know, I just don't think this is like great for me. I don't wanna do it. I wanna go home. Like, I can't take the pressure of it. But don't you think any job interview but excited to make progress in this series or finish it. I don't know if there's gonna be any more in this series. We don't know what Travis Bowdry's doing next. So I'm classing this as finishing a series. And then if that is not a five star, the next option is Mislaid and Parts Half Known by Sean and Maguire because I always give Way with Children series five stars now. However, I've heard from a lot of people that this is their least favorite in the series for a while and people who always give it five stars, this is the first one that they haven't given five stars. So again, I always give Way with Children five stars. You'd think this would be a five star, however, I've heard not so great things. All of these books, I think, have like a strong chance of being a five star, but also a lot of reasons why they could not be a five star. So I think these are good places to start. And then if none of these are five stars, we shall continue the search. I have no idea what I'm gonna read after this. Cause like, I look at my spreadsheet, my series spreadsheet, and I'm like, none of you, none of you are gonna be five stars. <laughs> Which is kind of bad that like I don't think any series I'm gonna be reading are gonna be five stars. Like why am I doing this? I'm gonna go start this. I cannot wait to dive into it and I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit of the ways through. Less rodeo written on my back window. I've never tried this before I met you Here we go into the wildness unknown You seem to shift 
what I thought that I knew. Hello cuties, it's been a little while, it's been a few days, because it's taken me a little while to get into this. I'm halfway through, I read to halfway, because this isn't going to be a five star, <laughs> so I didn't need to like, check in periodically to drag the video out, because uh, it's not going to be a five star. So, I think I told you the plot of the first Finney Donovan, where she gets kind of wrapped up in this like, assassin world, and she's like, trying to like, not kill anyone or whatever, and I don't want to spoil the plot for this one, because it's like, quite a big reveal at the end of the first book, but someone that she probably like deep down does somewhat care about someone who's very much like entangled in her life but also she has like a lot of beef with <laughs> and a lot of trouble with a hit is put out on them kind of in similar channels where she was once <laughs> being asked to kill people and so she's trying to prevent them from being killed but also she doesn't really like them and it's just like kind of this back and forth and there's just something about this one that took me a long time to get into the first 100 pages of this felt like a chore and considering Finley Donovan is killing it was on my five my no, 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 no. <laughs> was on my, I just went in the garden, I'm all like zen, <laughs> I can't speak. I got crazy out of my life, I'm so happy, I swear, oh, I swear, crazy. I've been I doing swear. yoga. The... Because Funny Donovan was on my top 10 books last year, that's kind of shocking. I'm enjoying it a lot more now, I'm at the halfway point and kind of the stuff, the last 70 pages have been a lot stronger, but th this book does the thing where like, it's really recapping you on everything that happened in not a particularly subtle <laughs> way, because this kicks off straight after the events of the previous book and it's very much like entangled still with what happened in the previous book it has to remind you of absolutely everything think of like in the thursday murder club if you've read those it doesn't have to remind you of everything because it's kind of like self-contained mysteries with like you do get reminded of stuff that's happened in previous books as the book goes on but it's kind of like in a subtle you know just dropping things in way this the first 50 page of this were just a freaking recap for the first book because it is so entrenched in what happened in the previous book and I was just like oh <laughs> I feel like perhaps this series the way to read it is like an omnibus like and you just don't read the first 50 pages of each next book because it's gonna remind you about what happened previously but I do think that the humor in this is very fun I love her and Vero's relationship I just think this is a fun this is a fun series I also do have some problems though with the love triangle in this and I'm getting the sense I read a Janet Ivanovich once <laughs> for the Goodreads Choice Awards uh, that was one of the winners and that's like a serialized mystery romance series and I read like number 17 or something but I got told it, it wouldn't matter and like that had some of the worst writing I've ever seen but it also had a love triangle that obviously been going on for 17 books she was dating one of them like boyfriend girlfriend sleeping with the other one and I just like I just hate these love triangles <laughs> I don't think I like, and I, in the first book I could look over it because I thought, oh, maybe it's not going to be a big deal, but I'm getting the sense Miss L is going to write like 10 Finley Donovan books and we are going to be swapping back and forth between these two men the entire fucking time. <laughs> like, the entire time we are going to be going back and forth, we're going to be pinballing back and forth between these men and I just think it's so boring that element of the book. I'm so uninterested in it. And there's one of them that's so obviously the better one. I mean, this isn't spoilers, but like the police officer, Nick, is obviously the guy she should go for, right? Like, obviously. You are absolutely right. I'm not here for the other guy. And so just when she's with him, oh, it just pisses me off. I just don't, I'm not interested in romance subplots in my murder mysteries particularly when they're just like oh, there's no this, okay I'm, this is where i'm starting to sense a problem with this if it's that kind of book where just these romances go on for like 10 books like i want there to be a point to this and if i feel like there's not a point to it i'm gonna get a bit worried so i'm still enjoying it it's still a lot of fun the mystery the things that are happening to them it's still like ridiculous and fun i'm still i'm very much more enjoying it now i'm over those first 100 pages but i just think cracks in the veneer are beginning to show <laughs> from what was an amazing first book listen i think i expected it because i know people haven't enjoyed the second one as much but yeah, I'm just starting to see what my personal issues with it are. Anyways, I'm going to try and finish this tonight. I don't know how successful I will be with that, but I'll check in with you when I, f when I finished it. Before I actually go read more of Lynn Donovan, I wanted to take a moment. I feel like I need to sit up. 
<laughs> I feel like I'm very low down. I want to take a moment to remind you guys of the Greece trip I'm hosting with Trova Trip this year because I do a terrible job of talking about it. I don't tell you guys about it enough. I don't talk about it enough, but it is one of the things I'm most excited about in life. <laughs> so I held one trip previously with Trova Trip to Costa Rica, which was honestly the trip of a lifetime. I'll leave the vlog of that down below. I got to meet the most incredible subscribers and viewers who I generally view as friends now. I think they are all such incredible people and I'm hosting another one to Greece this year from the 1st to 7th of October and I'd love to meet some of you guys and honestly I feel like this is gonna be the trip of a lifetime. If you're thinking oh I need a holiday, hmm, this, I feel like it's getting around the time of year where we often think about booking holidays. This I think is going to be incredible. So it's on the Greek island of Crete and we're traveling a little bit around the island and we're doing so many incredible activities guys. Let me just read some out to you. We're visiting the Palace of Knossos where the myth of like Ariadne and the Minotaur happened and we're gonna be reading Ariadne, we're gonna be doing a Greek mythology book club which I'm so excited for. We have got an archaeological museum visit to one of the top archaeological museums in the world. We're doing jeep safaris, we're visiting some of the most incredible beaches you've ever seen in your entire life, we're visiting incredible waterfalls, we're visiting incredible Greek towns. There are two also optional activities for a little bit extra. We've got a monastery visit and a wine tour so it's gonna be like a wine experience with food as well. And we're doing an all day cruise around islands and around little beaches on the coast, um, which is a little bit extra as well. But honestly, I think this trip is incredible. There's quite a lot included. You can go check out the website. I'll leave it linked down below to see what is included and what isn't. Essentially, all of those activities bar the ones I mentioned are a little bit extra included. All of your hotel stays are included. The double occupancy with the roommates and you can pay a little bit extra for your own room. But honestly, they did an incredible job of pairing up the roommates. Some of those people have become like, some of them call each other their wives. Like <laughs> they've become so close with their roommates. So I, I know it's daunting, but honestly, Trip Trip did such a good job last time of pairing roommates up that people became friends for life. Some of my travelers from the Costa Rica trip are meeting back up again and like seeing each other. It's, it was, it was an incredible trip and I would love for some of you to come on this Greece trip with me. Your transport to and from the airport is included. We also have transport all around the island included. We have a local guide with us the entire time, which I think is one of the best benefits because they are so knowledgeable. They handle all the logistics. We can just sit back. If anything goes wrong, they handle it. Nothing went wrong really, but our tour guide, Ivan, was so knowledgeable and so kind. He actually messaged us on the group chat <laughs> all in the other day saying happy world books day or happy books day or something with some picture of the books he had and I just I could not believe that our Costa Rica trip was in November and he remembered us think of how many groups he's probably toured with how many tours he's done since then and he remembered us and thought of us to, to send us like a happy books day message which was so kind that's the kind of experience you have with this local tour guide it's such a benefit a good chunk of food is included as well I'd say probably about half the food is included on this one it's six breakfasts two lunches and two dinners included and I genuinely believe it's going to be the trip of a lifetime. Now the cost is $2,799 per person. Let me just look up what that is in pounds as well. So that's about $2,240, but you only need to pay 25% of that to reserve your spot on the trip. The trip of a lifetime, baby. <laughs> So it's like, what, 550 pounds you'd have to pay up front, but that is to reserve a trip of a lifetime. Flights aren't included, and travel insurance isn't included. Flights aren't included because people are gonna be coming from all over the world. We've got people coming from the UK, from Europe, from America. So that's the reason flights aren't included, because there's no way to kind of like, make sure that that would be fair in payment. So I know it is expensive, but I genuinely think it's absolutely worth it. We've got people coming from the Costa Rica trip. So I think that's proof that it is, you know, you do get value for money. I think it's an absolutely amazing trip. I'm with you the entire time. We have an amazing holiday together. So if you guys have any questions about it, leave me them down below. But I think don't be scared. I think go for it. Go watch the Costa Rica trip if you're thinking about it, the vlog, and particularly the part at the end where some of the people who went on the trip spoke to the camera. You know, I think, I don't want to speak for them, but I think everyone had a really good time. It was honestly the trip of a lifetime. And you know, I know this is not accessible for everyone, but if you're thinking of, I want a truly amazing trip to Greece with fellow bookish friends, with Megan. <laughs> We'll go. <laughs> I try really hard to make make sure those trips, everyone's having the most incredible time. Tom's there as well, and he's making, he's carrying all your luggage. <laughs> Got a luggage boy. <laughs> included in the price as well. And he wants to make sure everyone had a great time. You know, every night on the Costa Rica trip, we stayed together until like 11 o'clock at night, at least playing games, playing pool, playing different games together. You know, I'm not just like gonna go hide away in my hotel room when when the activity is done. Like we are together all the time, unless of course you need your own alone space and that's fine. We had two friends come together on the Costa Rica trip. I know some people are thinking of bringing a partner on the Greece trip. Guys, I, 
I, I would not recommend this to you if I did not truly believe in it. I think it's an amazing opportunity for us to connect in truly a most amazing way. So yeah, I'll leave all the info link down below if you think about it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. There's also payment plans for those of you in the US if you wanna extend the payment over a longer period of time. So like you could come on the trip having not like paid it all, you know, if that's something that you wanna do. I think there's like 18, six, 12, 18 month payment plans. I could be completely wrong because you can't do it anywhere apart from America. In fact, I can look that up. Yeah, six, 12 or 18 month payment plans. So you can look into those as well if you want down below, but we had the most incredible experience on the Costa Rica trip. I cannot recommend this trip enough. So I'd love to see some of you in Crete in October. But yeah, I thought I'd do a little bit speaking about it because I never speak about it. I'm gonna try and be better at speaking about it because I genuinely think like if I was a viewer, I'd go on one of these with my favorite booktuber. And you know, not that I'm saying I'm your favorite booktuber. <laughs> Whoa. I, I cannot recommend these trips enough. I think the Costa Rica trip was absolutely a trip of a lifetime. So check out the link down below. Um, and like I said, there's payment plans. You only have to pay 25% to get your, to reserve your spot. So yes, let me know if you're thinking of booking. You can always reach out to me with any questions as well, be it on my social media, in my email, whatever. Anyways, I am going to go read more of Finley Donovan. Wish me luck because I want to read this today, but I've been struggling to get through it, but hopefully I'll get through it quicker now. I mean, it was fine. <laughs> oh, really? <sighs> that sucks. This, uh... this one's interesting because when I go and read reviews on Goodreads, I agree with what a lot of people who gave it two stars are saying, but I also agree with what a lot of people who gave it four stars are saying. Like, I don't really understand how that's even possible, but I'm reading them, I'm like, hmm, good point. And then I read the other ones, I'm like, hmm, good point. I think I'm gonna come down on a 3.5, which considering the first book was in my top 10 favorite books last year, is a little bit sad. I just think that this, this became, Finley Donovan is getting an edged a line of what kind of book it was and this veered in a direction that just isn't the kind of book I wanted it to be. Now that's me, right? Like that's like in my opinion, the author can do what she wants, but just it shuttled the line between like good mystery and like bad serial mystery. <laughs> like in a way that I would not be interested in. And I feel like it swerved a little bit. So I'm still gonna try and continue the series, but maybe I should have just left Finley Donovan's Killing It as a standalone, I don't know. Though there were elements I still enjoyed. I still think it's fun. I still think it's got good humor. I do think that some of the storylines, without saying too much, I think particularly Vero's storyline in this did not add to the character. Rather, it kind of like, took away from the role that the, that character was serving in the book. Oh my God, it's almost time for Meg to serve. No, <laughs> she's serving. It's almost time for Meg to serve. Yeah, it almost took away from what Vera, Vera's role in the book is as like a, just talking from like a writing craft standpoint. I didn't feel like it was necessary and it kept pissing me off throughout the story. It was okay. It was okay, it was okay. 3.5 is not a bad rating. Like I'm not sitting out here going, oh my God, it was terrible. But am I sitting out here going, is it good as the first one? Absolutely not. I can understand why people have had issues with this one. And I feel like from what I heard, people's opinions just go down <laughs> throughout the series. It just also has this thing where like the way, yes, I know it's a book, right? It's fiction. It's not, it's not real. You should know that wherever Britney says. <laughs> it's just a movie. It's pretend. If you're an adult, you should know that. Although it is fiction, do you think that the author would know how the publishing industry works? The way that the publishing industry works in this book is absolutely fucking bonkers. The shit that Finley gets away with is insanity. I don't understand. Like her, her, a publisher gets like a 10,000 words from her, like the first few chapters and she's like, Hollywood's interested, we're gonna make a film. And I'm like, <laughs> like everyone, this is not happening. Everyone calm down. And um, I also feel like, you know, Finley as this tired, stressed out mum is kind of the pitch of the book. But at this point, it feels like the author is fed up with these children. Like she's like, what are the children there? Like the whole book is just her finding ways to write out the children so that Finley can get up to her escapades. And it feels like she's done with the kids. She's like, my life would be a lot more convenient if she wasn't a mum. But that's like what the pitch of the book was. So yeah, it was okay, but I can see issues with it. Now, I'm on reading suits my patrons right now, and they have confirmed my opinions that I'm gonna give Books from Bone Nuts five stars. I'm just feeling good vibes from it. I don't wanna speak too soon. I'm gonna go into it with no expectations, but I think it's gonna be five stars. So I'm gonna go start this now. Maybe I'll check in with you tonight if I get a little bit of the ways through. I don't know. I make no promises, but I'm so excited for a prequel of one of my favorite books last year. I think it's gonna be such a good time. So I'm gonna dive straight into it. 
wish me luck hopefully i love it <laughs> guys oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god i'm only 70 pages into the book but we need to talk ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! i can't do it <laughs> firstly i just want to say i know i was wearing this in the intro because i've literally just edited it but i i live in this what you guys understand on days that i'm ed editing and reading i this is my uniform it's like a hoodie and can i show you oh a tracky matching tracky and i live in it i live in it i live in it so i literally wash it and then wear it again straight away it's like my uniform okay now we got that out of the way <laughs> um i'm only 70 pages in to this i have barely cracked the surface but i have to talk to you i started this on reading sprints on my patrons last night and i read the first 30 pages on sprints and then i was like sorry guys i can't do any more sprints because <laughs> Because reading this book in front of people feels like having sex in front of other people. <laughs> Not that I've ever done it. <laughs> it's like... I am really uncomfortable right now and I'm feeling like I want to get up and leave. I just feel very exposed. I couldn't do it. I had to like be... I... And now... <laughs> like the thought of talking to you is stressing me out. I can't... I can't do it. So wait, we'll talk about that all that in a second. Let's just the synopsis. We're following Viv, who we meet Legends and Lattes, but you could start with this book. There's nothing stopping you. It is a prequel. Um, and she's like a mercenary and she goes and like kills baddies, but she gets injured. She gets stabbed through the leg in the prologue. It's quite gory. My face, they've made, they, my patrons have made a meme of my face. They made it into a sticker on our Discord. It's like the ugliest picture of me I've ever seen. I've been reading that scene. And so her like squad leader sends her to this little tiny ramshackle seaside town to recover and she's kind of like woken up in the inn and she's gone to the bakery and then she discovers this bookshop where there's this, like this little mouse it's called like a rat ratin ratkin but like there's a little rat creature who can speak who runs the bookshop and there's a little dog slash wolf who's like their pet and the rat is recommending the rat <laughs> is recommending Viv books and like Viv is learning to read and learning the joys of reading. You know, having been a very active like slayer, you know what I mean? She's learning the joys of reading and that's all I've really encountered so far. And I just can't explain to you how, oh, oh guys, how sacred this book feels to me. Like it feels, it feels like I'm, at, I, I need to just dim the lights. <laughs> Being a bit saucy. Oh, get crazy <laughs> I need to just be alone I can't describe to you how I don't think this is pressure I don't think like I've had many books where I'm like oh I really want to give this book a five star this is a completely new feeling to me where like I just don't I might I'm actively rebelling at the idea of having to interact with anyone while I read this I just want to cocoon myself like in a little butterfly cocoon and read the book and then emerge <laughs> it's like a um like a butterfly in a cocoon. You know how, like a butterfly is in a cocoon. So I would be like some type of like a cocoon. The cocoon. This is the cocoon. Cocoon. In terms of how much I'm enjoying it, I am very much enjoying it already. I'm loving the writing. I'm loving this little dusty seaside town that's a little bit like falling around. Oh, I can picture it so well. It's such a he's so good at finding settings and occurrences that make us just feel so happy. And the idea of this book maybe being about the love of reading and falling in love with reading and discovering reading, oh, it fills me with such joy. But I kind of, I may not check in with you until I finish it. I know that's to the detriment of the vlog because that's like kind of my job. <laughs> I'm just like, no, no. But um, I, I, I just don't know if I can do that. I think I need to just go read it. I need to just go experience it. I'm like, I put makeup on and I'm like, get it off! Like anything that's like, get 
between me and the book. I'm like, no, I hate it. Like, I just want to, exp I can't, exp it's, it's visceral. It's a visceral feeling. I need to just read this book alone. <laughs> So I'm gonna go continue on with it. I'm. I mean, all I can tell you is that I'm very much enjoying it. But um, you know, it's yeah, it's fun. How he's thinking of like a new cozy experience for us to have, and it's great. I mean, oh fucking the descriptions of the bakery and the pastries. Go. I mean, it doesn't take much to make me want a pastry, but I'm definitely making me want a pastry. So I can't promise you I'm gonna speak to you again. I might. I might. I might. But I might not. And we all just gotta be okay with that. Something else that's interesting is well exciting is i've got some book mail we've got two from my wish list which we're gonna open together and one from a publisher now i did request a book from this publisher i know which publisher it is but a that was only like a day before this package arrived so that would be very speedy if so and b let me hide my address it's got like all these stickers like travel stickers on it which the book I requested, as far as I know, also I'm not in focus, isn't related to travel. So let's see what this is first, shall we? What is something? Holy shit. What? <gasps> okay, wait. <laughs> so I've been sent a copy of The Pairing by Casey McQuiston. <laughs> <laughs> which I did not request. Listen, I'm not gonna knock a gift horse in the mouth, but this, I did not, I have only read Red, Right, and Lola Blue by Casey McQuiston, which I did not love, but we've got two bisexual exes, Thea and Kit, accidentally booked the same European food and wine tour and challenged each other to a hookup competition to prove they're over each other, but sometimes a taste of everything only makes you crave what you can't have. This does sound very exciting. So thank you, book break. I was not expecting this because I did not request it. We have also got in the pack a non-alcoholic cocktail I don't drink, I am a bit fussy with drinking flavours, but I shall donate this to someone in my family. But the thing that I am maybe most excited about in this whole package is a mackerel. Wee oui, wee oui, baguette. Bisou. What a lovely little sweet treat. Does it say what flavour it is? No, I'm gonna eat it regardless. How exciting. Well, thank you. Guys, tell me, are you excited? Shall I read this soon? The new Casey McQuiston. And then let's see what the books we have from the wish list are. How exciting. You guys, it's so kind whenever anyone gets me something from my. <gasps> oh my god! This is from Katie Gorman. Thank you so much, Katie. We have got The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. Oh my giddy aunt. Part Sherlock Holmes murder mystery, part The Looking Glass. The Tainted Cup is one of the wildest, most original stories I've ever had the privilege to explore. So I think this is like a fantasy murder mystery. You are right up my street. But this is a new release that I have been so excited for. So thank you so much. This has been really highly rated. I feel like a lot of people who have read this have really been telling me that they've enjoyed it. So thank you so much. <gasps> That's so exciting. And let's see what the other one is. That is such an exciting one, guys. I think I'm really gonna enjoy that. And I think this is one that I should read soon because I think a lot of you will enjoy it. A peculiar crime, a brilliant investigator, a mystery of epic proportions. So yeah, very excited for that one. And let's see what this one is. Thank you so much, Katie. I haven't got your socials unless it's on this one. I'm assuming there isn't a note, but I'm assuming this one is from Katie as well. Katie, please DM me or comment so I can thank you personally. But we've also got... Ah! An act of foul play by T.E. Kinsey, the next in the Lady Hardcastle mystery series. This is great because if for some reason I read books from Bone Dust and it's not a five star and I read Miss Slade and Parts Afternoon and it's not a five star, this is probably my next best bet. So this is perfect timing. If those are not a five star, I mean, you probably know by how long it's left in the vlog, but um, if those aren't a five star, I don't know. So if those aren't five star, this will probably be what I pick up. This is like, oh, I don't even know, number nine in the Lady Hardcastle. This feels shorter than some of the other ones. They were shorter and then they got taller and I think they're shorter again. <laughs> In this one, there's murders at a play, which is so exciting. So thank you so much for both of these. And a pleasant surprise to get Casey McQuiston's new book. Listen, I've only read Red, Ryan, or Blue. Didn't love it, but I'm willing to give Casey McQuiston another go. So let me know. Let me know what you think. I am going to go read Bookshops and Bone Dust. Like I said, guys, I can't promise if I'm going to chat with you. I think I just need to go experience this book. I haven't felt like this about a book in a long time. But, um... I think it's I think it's gotta be what happens. <laughs> Good morning friends. Everyone say hello to Rora. You might hear her washing herself. I have finished Book Just Bone Dust. I had to just go read it. <laughs> but I'm giving it five stars. I
I just loved it. It was such an enjoyable read. I don't know, this is such a different reading experience than any other book. This and Legends and Lattes are just so like low stakes. Well, no, they're not low stakes. Both the books managed to have quite high stakes, in fact. But everything just feels like chill and like comforting and like I feel like I'm just at comfort I'm at rest when reading it I can't describe it's just such a different reading experience I really really love this do I think it's as good as Legend Lattes no but like we've got a sliding scale of five stars like Legend Lattes was probably an all-time favorite for me this is probably like a favorite of the year you know there's like different there's five star and there's five star plus you know what I mean <laughs> this was very interesting because Viv is a lot younger in this and so it's very interesting seeing her act in more like teenager -y, young adult ways. And I think really the beauty of this book is seeing, someone is like fucking, like it sounds like balloons are going off outside. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Let me, let me rephrase what I was going to say actually in a more interesting way. The noise has grown in me. <laughs> that ability. I think a difficulty, I think a difficulty was prequel. I don't think you guys can probably even hear that, but it's really pissing me off. Doing. I think a problem with prequels is that often you know where the character ends up right we know what Viv goes on to do and so it kind of removes like the purpose of the book it kind of removes the arc that you want to see a character go on if you kind of know the start and end point but uh, what I thought this did so well is we really saw some of the things that happened to Viv that made her the way that she is do you know what I mean you see some of the seedlings planted for the journey that happens in Legend Lattes and some of the seedlings planted for the, the where she starts in Legend Lattes I thought in a very interesting and like very subtly done way and you know we had like cozy coffee shop in this one we have cozy books on this one Travis Bradley knows what he's doing like he's got a formula and he's sticking to it and there's a character in this who loves recommending books to people and obviously I love that like that's one of life's greatest pleasures it's like my freaking job <laughs> and so I just really loved seeing that written about like the joy of when you recommend a book to someone and they love it like oh my god like that's such a wonderful feeling I do think that this doesn't necessarily do anything that Legends Lattes wasn't trying to do it's similar themes of cozy family found family friendships but I just had a wonderful time when reading it I just loved Loved it. <laughs> I just loved it. Oh, and the epilogue, guys. <gasps> the epilogue, I wanted to cry and grin like a Cheshire cat at the exact same time. The epilogue is like 10 stars. The epilogue is absolutely incredible. <gasps> oh, that epilogue, it's like one of those, oh, it's just one of those endings to a book where you're like, <laughs> I love the ending. And I think that that does kind of put a close on this world for me. I mean, he may write other books. I'm counting this as the end of a series. I feel like whatever Travis Bowder writes next is not gonna be, like, it'll be the same world you know but it will be like different characters I don't think it'll be part of the series because it kind of puts a lovely bookend on Viv's story I will also say this kind of like world of orcs and like little creatures is not the kind of fantasy that I read a lot but this made it feel very accessible to me it made it feel it makes it feel just like completely normal to me what is that noise <laughs> this is supposed to be a lovely end of the video you're ruining it you're ruining it <laughs> Fuck is it? It's obviously someone like shearing plants or something. It's been going on all day, by the way. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Anyways, I love this. I think if you enjoyed Legends and Lattes, you're probably likely to love this as well. So let me know if you pick it up. But um, I think there's a lot to love in this little book and a lovely prequel. Often I have issues with prequels, but like I said, I think there was aspects of this that made it done well. So yeah, short video. <laughs> But I do think I know what are gonna be five stars quite well. Like I'm quite good at finding five stars. My lower ratings come from me wanting to try new types of books, but when I know what is gonna deliver me a safe five star, nine times out of 10, I probably do know what it is. So yes, but I'm missing impulse off known. Who knows if that'd be a five star or not? Act of foul play, who knows if that'd be a five star or not? But yeah, this just was, I just loved it. But I just had to be alone. I had to go away from you and just read the whole book. So I hope you enjoyed this little vlog. It was shorter than I anticipated it being because I was nervous about this one. So the vlog that we've got coming next weekend, I'm very, very excited for. I think it's gonna be a really fun one and I have no idea how many books I'm gonna have to read for it. So I'm very much looking forward to it and I'll see you next week with a new video or two new videos. I'll see you soon. Okay. Ah, I'm sorry about anything. Love you, bye. <laughs>